Welcome to the Two Wealth Show, a show that shares how you can create real wealth for you and your family. I'm one of your hosts, Justin Bogard, and my co-host is Elizabeth Sickles, aka Super E. I am a real estate note investor, specializing in performing residential real estate debt. I find the deals, acquire them for my own portfolio, as well as educate investors while walking them through the process of owning a real estate note. My co-host Super E, a real estate investor, specializing in short-term rentals and the management of them. She connects investors with short-term tenants and manages everything in between. Our show is sponsored by Bright Path Notes and Elizabeth Mayora. You can find out more information by visiting our websites at brightpathnotes.com and elizabethmayora.com. All right. Hey, everybody. This is Justin Bogar from the Two Wealth Show and my co-host. Elizabeth Mayora Sickles. Hello. I had, I had to get that right over there. And then <laughs> hello here, we got Mr. Mark Dolfini, who's our special guest today. Uh, thanks, Mark, for coming on today. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. So we've got some things going on around the world right now, right, Elizabeth? We do. So this uh, this COVID-19 virus is obviously affecting everyone, everywhere, and every market and everything we do. And so we want to release this episode and just basically talk about this and how it affects our different areas. So I haven't heard about it. What is this thing? Oh, you haven't heard about it? It's this <laughs> computer virus going around. You may you may have gotten it from mine. I think my phone is infected. Your phone may be infected. You may need to disinfect your phone and your computer, Mark. <laughs> Good luck finding the wipes on that one. Yeah, yeah. There's no such thing. There's no. They don't make wipes strong enough for that. <clears throat> <laughs> well, I'm glad we can joke about this stuff because this is a very serious subject and it does affect a lot of people. And it is scary. And you hear a lot of stuff in social media. You hear a lot of stuff on the news and, you know, controversial things and different sides of this and good and bad and, and horrible. And it's just minor. And I don't know, Elizabeth, from your side of things, why don't you kind of start with this and just kind of tell us what you found out? Sure. So for us, everything was really pretty calm until last Wednesday night, whenever, uh, <laughs> whenever they canceled the Big Ten, the NCAA. So for here in Indy, March is the start of our busy season. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were on track to have a really phenomenal month. Um, as of right now, so um, we've had just over $30,000 in cancellations. Wow. Uh, it's, yeah, it's pretty severe with my business. Um, what we're doing is we're remarketing in a different way. So we're marketing towards healthcare professionals that are still working. We're also marketing towards the people that are now cooped up with their family that are not used to spending that much family time together. So we're, we're pivoting as much as we can to meet what the current needs are. We also, we have a phenomenal relationship with our cleaning team. My cleaning is third party, but just as much as part of my team as my immediate staff, um, they're doing additional precautions as to what they already did. Um, so we're cleaning has always been a top priority for us, but we're just, again, just adapting to be, um, to make sure that our houses are hundred percent sanitary um, <laughs> for our guests. Uh, but overall um, it's kind of interesting because what, what I think is going to happen with the short term rental market is I think that eventually when all of this passes, it's going to be actually stronger than ever. And the reason is because you have so many less people going in and out of an individual house or an apartment than what you do now. So what I've told my team is we are business as usual, of course, taking the precautions with the CDC and with what the WHO is, rec is recommending. But from the beginning, I was in this for the long haul. Um, from what, even when I started the business. So my team is still, we are 100% focused on our clients who are the property owners and to our guests um, for this. But it's very um, devastating is probably the best word to use right now. Um, but we are, we're still glass half full, as Mark said, as we were doing some pre-show things. Um, but that, that's kind of where, where I see it going. Okay. Mark, you are in a slightly different market than Super E and I, but still in real estate. And so talk a little bit about how this has affected you since, like Elizabeth pointed out, like last Wednesday, was last Wednesday, you said? 
uh, yes. what's the, the turning point for her. So what, from your perspective, what was the turning point? Well, I, I don't, <clears throat> I don't know that we've experienced a turning point yet for us just because, um, you know, we're on a, we're on a, you know, our, our pay cycle's a little different, right? So, yeah. um, you know, we, we're in the middle of the month, um, and <clears throat> the, uh, you know, the, the pay cycle hasn't been interrupted yet because April's rents haven't come due. But, you know, we were already, you know, I mean, we were coming along pretty good. The, what I'm seeing is obviously the velocity of money has basically come to a screeching halt for a lot of people. Um, so where I'm seeing the biggest, um, the, the biggest impact is on our maintenance side because we get a fair amount of revenues that, you know, generate from our revenue or from our maintenance side of things. And um, there's people that just won't let our maintenance guys in. So even wow. if they're just doing regular inspections, um, you know, to come and I, and I get it. I mean, I want to keep my maintenance guys safe as much as I want to make sure that the properties are maintained. But, um, you know, people are like, you know, whatever, whatever maintenance thing, you know, we will live without a washing machine for a while. You know, if that means that we don't have to, you know, uh, turn something in. So um, or have somebody in, in the house that's going to potentially be infectious. Yeah. Um, you know, so that's what we're seeing right now. Okay. So for those of you, that don't, I'm sorry, Liz, but I was going to, we probably should frame Mark who he is and what he does a little bit first. <laughs> but um, So Mark, you are, uh, I see in the background, you have your green screen up and it says landlord coach up there, beautifully written. And so Mark kind of explain like basically the, what you do in real estate. So they, everyone kind of knows what sure. I do. Everyone knows what super he does and kind of frame real quickly what, what you do. Yeah. Well, really, I don't do a whole lot. If I'm doing this right, I don't have to do, you know, um, but the, the, the concept for me is uh, I have a property management business um, and many, it manages a lot of my own properties that I have, but, um, uh, but I also do some management for others. So um, we, that, and that, you know, from that side of things, um, you know, where I used to work about 20 hours a day <laughs> trying to keep, keep afloat. Now I work in my real estate business about two hours a week. So the, the whole, um, you know, the whole concept, of, one of the things I teach is about people who get into this business when the real estate business is the context of being time wealthy. So they're not spending all their time on income generation and going out and living their actual, actual life that they actually want. Right. Thanks for, for sharing that. Sure. Mark. Uh, Elizabeth, I, I cut you off. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You were going to chime in about something. Uh, I just wanted to ask Mark, have you, have any of your residents or tenants asked about a decrease yet in their payments for April with reduced hours? No, we're going to do that. We're, we're putting together a protocol for something like that. I mean, I've been watching, you know, I'm a part of a lot of different feeds in terms of what people are, you know, what their plan is. And it's, you know, some of it ranges from sublime to ridiculous, but, um, you know, I don't, I, I think what people need to remember, regardless of what business that you're in in the real estate side of things, real estate is a people business. End of story. And if you just remember the human side of this business, you know, you can you can take a hard line stance. I think that's going to to yield you not the results that you want. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, I think if you're, you know, yes, we've all got bills to pay, we've all got, you know, stuff to do. But at the end of the day, you know, yeah, we could easily go back and say, well, you should have had health insurance. Well, you should have had disability insurance. Well, you should have had, well, the reality is that most people don't. Yeah. So, you know, and, and many of in the, in the, and I don't say this in a mean way, many of those who are renting uh, are renting because they're, you know, either not in a position to buy or they just, they don't want to buy. Um, and some people are, are in they're financially stable, but other people are not. And as a result, you know, you're looking at least anywhere from 30 to 60% of the people who you know, wouldn't have a, they have no other option but to rent, you know, depending on the market that they're in. Um, so I, I'm, I think at the end of the day, you need to remember, you know, that this is a people business. So what we're going to see, what, what the protocols that we're going to put in place is we're going to, we're going to look at every situation on a case by case basis. Um, and it's not about, you know, being fair, but we're going to underwrite their situation. If someone is in the healthcare field and, you know, they don't need, um, they don't need to be, you know, they're going to pay the rent, you know, uh, as normal. Okay, fine. Yeah. But if you're in, a, in an unusual situation where you're not going to be able to make money, okay, then just all we're asking is just 
you know, come to the table with something, come to the table that with some, with, you know, proof of loss, just like an insurance company would, yeah. you know, I don't go to my insurance company and sit and walk into the office and say, Oh, I wrecked my car. And they go, Oh, well, let me write you a check. Right. No, there's, there's, there's protocols for that. There's proof of loss. Let's, let's walk through this together as a transaction and we'll just figure out the best and most reasonable way to approach that. And I think that's the best way to go about it. I 100% agree. I've been I've been reading a few things online and researching some stuff, and it looks like you know either state level or federal agencies are are wanting to encourage uh, banks and encourage um, landlords and property management companies to not really forgive rent per se, but kind of push push rent back maybe, and then catch up when they can. And so I like your idea, just taking it case by case, and then just having the the tenant or the the the, the person there that is the you know paying the mortgage <clears throat> transparent about their situation and say hey look because I, I haven't really been affected uh, yet by it I can see you know in April that's what's really going to happen but uh, for right now everyone paid like their March and their and their middle March payments um, I haven't really seen a hiccup in that but of course you know we're we're focusing on our assets are, are lower are lower in value so payments coming in could be anywhere from three hundred to six hundred dollars a month so they're not not large payments uh, per se, but yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, being the bank, we have the ability to kind of create the rules or change the rules as, as we want to go. So we can, you know, forgive some debt if we want. We can forbear payments if we want and defer payments to the end, <clears throat> excuse me, of the amortization schedule, uh, keeping in mind that interest is always accruing, but it's, you know, it's going to be nominal compared to paying a full Full months mortgage so there are options for us and it's only going to benefit them and the ones that deserve it you know they deserve it right the ones that don't really pay or they skip paying or they have a habitual late history they're you know that's just what they normally do and they're looking for a kind right. of will <laughs> and so i like taking things by a case-by-case basis so i fully agree with what how you're approaching that market which is exactly the point like you know um you know if they've been if they're late anyway you know and and they've been late for the last every month for the last six months yeah. i mean yeah i'll yeah. grant them some grace but not as yeah. i mean it's again it's just going to be different because you know they're they're all, they're all you know they just have bad money management versus an actual real hiccup i mean again they're yeah. probably going to be impacted much much harder because of their situation yeah because they don't manage money well and all this other stuff but you know i i think that we just need to look at this as the trial that it is and you know and, and walk through this and we will we'll come out on the other side i mean you know there's you gotta remember there's going to be some people who are going to lose loved ones over this you yep. know and and the reality is that you know most of us are going to get this end of story most of us are going. the only thing that this quarantining is doing is slowing it down yeah so we that way we're not getting this huge run-up of sick people you know that are gonna you know, um overwhelm the healthcare system yes we, we just want to spread it out and i get it um what has me concerned is how long this will last yeah. because <clears throat> I, I think the fact of the matter is you know if if we can get it I'm, i mean i was kind of thinking today and i know as morbid as this might sound i'm like kind of thinking like i kind of just want to get it so i can get it over with right so you, you know like do it for a while <laughs> yeah like I, I just, I don't want to be wondering if every time I get a fever, you know, like, am I hot or is it a fever? You know, like, I don't want to freak out about this anymore. I just kind of want to be done with it. But, you know, but the, the fact of the matter is the three of us that sit here are in an, in an age group that we don't really have to worry about getting it. 98% of the people that get it will, I mean, it's going to suck. It's the flu, you know, I mean, yeah. flu like symptoms, but it's better than cancer, you know, I mean, where, you know, where it's. Better than Alzheimer's, which has a 100% mortality rate, yeah. not a 90, not a 98% survival rate. I, I mean, look at it that way. So right. I, I think from when you're looking at it from from that aspect, you just really have to see this as we'll get through it. I mean, it's going to be a blip by you know by June or July. Hopefully by the end of next week, things are going to start to to tick back up, and we're going to um, you know we'll just uh, it'll be a blip on the radar. But I, I do believe this is going to be. I think the effects of this are going to be felt for quite a few months. Um, yeah. I, I can't say it's going to be a blip on the radar financially, but I do think it's going to be, we'll get past it. And then we just need to figure out how to dig out, dig out of it. 
Yeah, I, I see. I'm, I'm trying to be optimistic about it, and I'm trying to position our company to where um, we can be at the right place at the right time. And with, with having some phone calls and some conversations with some of my mentors, it, it seems like the path that we're choosing to go down is just to position ourselves for the fact that the market, that market has just gone down so much that the volatility of it just turns people more and more on to an alternative investment like real estate or like notes or being in short-term rentals or having proper management or rentals and just makes it more attractive. So I think the money out there is going to move um, very fluidly to a place like this uh, when, when the kind of the dust settles. And so we feel like capturing uh, private money is going to be a, a, a huge thing to go after and, and be able to make both parties happy, so to speak. So investors are going to be looking for opportunities to deploy their capital and, and other that they were already doing that didn't work out so well for them, you know, in the 2008, 2009 era. And then now the last couple of months, obviously things have taken a dip. So anxious money. Yeah, I think the difference here, though, <clears throat> there are some fundamental differences between now and 2008, 2009. Number one, liquidity is very, very high still. There's there's a lot of money in the market. Mm -hmm. um, now, there's going to be less money in the market, less liquidity in the market, but there's also not an oversupply of housing. Right. That oversupply of housing was what really crushed the uh, the markets last time. So you didn't you don't see that now. I mean, there's a there's a very, very strong demand for housing. Mm -hmm. Because it's 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 based on an actual demand. It's not based on hey, we're just building more and more housing. So I think that's a fundamental difference. Is that there's lots of liquidity in the market now. Again, a lot of it's dried up because you're took it looking at a thirty percent decline in the you know in the stock market yeah. where a lot of liquidity was. But I still think that there's going to be a lot of. I mean, money's still going to be fairly loose. You've got very cheap money out there right now. If anything. I'm going to be a little bit more concerned about a deflationary environment, given where the interest rates are. And that that's a whole other conversation, not to make yeah. this an economics dis discussion. But I have a little bit more concern with that. So I would be really, really concerned about, you know, lowering prices too quickly, you know, to, to accommodate renters and stuff like that. I would just um, that's that's got me a little bit more concerned about a deflation because deflation will crush this economy way faster than a hyperinflation, hyperinflationary market. I mean, there's a Goldilocks zone, right? Some inflation is good. No deflation is good. That's like that's that's just not going to be good for anybody. So that's probably got me a little bit more concerned. But you know, I don't think we're there yet. I think even if we look at this protracted, you know, where we've got two or three months of this, yeah, then you're going to be looking at horrible <laughs> impacts across the across the globe. But I don't know that we're quite there yet. Um, but you know, I, I think there's a tremendous number amount of opportunity for people that are paying attention. And, um, and and where you know you can really help some people, and I don't mean to sound this predatory. I mean this truly that you can help people in ways of you know helping them get out of properties and get into other properties, and just make make it a win win for everybody. Right. I also think on the opportunity side, Mark. You know, having obviously we all lived through two thousand seven, two thousand eight, and nine, and I was in Detroit um, at that time. So I, whenever we had that, that really was. Is, um, not good for my for my city or, or anything like that. But now, just having lived through that, and it's so funny because I remember having a conversation with my neighbor, and I said, "Oh, I I would never invest in real estate." And now that we're in this, which is you can't compare it, right? Because it's, it's so much different. But some of the underlying fundamentals are the same. When the, when at that point, you know, twelve years ago, I was like, "Oh no, that I'm not investing any of my money." And now, like I've already made some plays in the stock market on things that, I mean, now's the time to go shopping, right? And now's also the time to figure out, okay, if you are a real estate investor or if you're thinking about getting into real estate, it's really, okay, where can I position myself the best? Because when we do come out of it, just like we always have in the past, it's all the history of the US and of the world is that things are gonna get better. Is it gonna take a little bit more time? Eh, maybe it's gonna take a lot more time, we don't know. But at least be smart about what you're looking at and about the future and, and where things are going to go. Yeah, absolutely. I think the fundamentals of the economy are still good. I mean, we're not, I mean, it, you know, we always talk about that when things are bad, but you know, there's money that's going to rotate in and out. I mean, there's a lot of Chinese money. I mean, that was, that was being invested 
here, um, which is obviously part of why the interest rates have been driven down so much. But um, you know, I, I don't, I don't know that um, you know because they were buying up our debt. You know, that's kind of how that was working. But I don't really know that. Um, you know, again, there's just too many variables right now because we just don't know when things are going to are going to loosen back up. Um, you know, from what we understand, and I was reading, I was going on. Uh, this is through the CDC website. Um, there was a video that was published three days ago. Now, granted, information's changing all the time, but mm-hmm. this was from a surgeon that was basically talking about, you know, the reason why this is. Again, we got to flatten this out so we're not in this wartime crisis of, you know you know, who's more likely out of the two of you, who's more likely to live? Okay, you get the ventilator and you don't, right? Um, that's a wartime scenario that Italy is going through right now. And that sucks. Um, and I and I pray for those people because just, I mean, just the healthcare providers that have to make such a decision, that's what we're trying to avoid here. And, you know, the demographics, you have to consider too that the demographics of China are very different than the demographics of the United States. and yeah. You know, we're not a really particularly healthy people, um, you know, in, in our 40s and 50s. Like, like you know, it's just we're different. We got hypertension and all these other other things that are going on, these diseases because of our lifestyle. And, um, you know, it's it's just going to be interesting to see when things start to loosen up. Because when you start hearing about borders being sealed off and people not being allowed to travel and things like that, um, that's got me very, very concerned, but we're not there yet. But again, we have to kind of see, well, like, where is this, where is this all going? Um, I, I, I can say, you know, it's funny. I can say that there's a lot of people who are jumping up and down about the, you know, the lunacy that's going on. Um, I think the lunacy that's going on is just like people just freaking out, going out and buying a pallet of t- toilet paper. Right. Like, you know, I'm, I swear to God, I'm going to make my next, next real estate deal to include the toilet paper in the, in the property, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so and that's what Eric, Elizabeth does. She charges per square. <laughs> <laughs> we actually did have a guest on Sunday that stole the toilet paper that we had out. That makes sense. You should have it just be the, uh, the old, the old paper, you know, the paper ones that are dispensed like at school and stuff. So that way they do take it, you know, you, it's the real paper, right? I see, I see you shifting, Elizabeth. I think that's I think that's where you go. <laughs> from from super E to super C, Charmin. Charmin. <laughs> super C. I like that. That's good. That's right. <laughs> well, we uh, what well, we had a real good discussion here today, and, and thanks, Mark, for coming on. And um, real quickly, let's let's talk about how this is affected uh, personally. So. Sitting here today, all three of us are at a different location. Uh, I'm at my home office. It looks like Super E's at her home office. Mark, I'm not you're at your home office, but we've all obviously had to make adaptations to our everyday business and life. So for me, it's been kind of fun learning how much I appreciate teachers now with uh, e-learning going on. We have four kids here, and uh, it's it. It was a learning experience for me doing this e-learning stuff. So that's it's been fun though. I've I've actually enjoyed being around the family, you know, at a you know, look over and I could see, you know, what's going on and kind of hang out with somebody for a few minutes. And I've also learned that the drive time has condensed to basically nothing. So I don't have to travel to an office, I don't have to travel to meetings. So I've gotten my windshield time, so to speak, back. And I'm actually able to get just as much done in a day as I was being in the office, even with the distractions of being at home. And so for me, I think that at the adapting of it has been kind of interesting. But I've also learned that, you know, communication and doing this stuff is, is making myself just as efficient as I was working out of the other office. Uh, Super E, what, what are your thoughts on that? It's going to be very challenging for me because I'm such a social person. So, and I don't have anybody in the house, right? I don't have a husband or, or kids yet. So, um, I'm still still working a lot, you know, right? Um, but I am looking forward to reading some books that I've been wanting to read and just like take a breath, really stop and do some strategy also for a lot different strategy than what I thought I was going to be doing. So, I'm just kind of looking at it as, as a plus as well to make the best. Of, and I'm actually cooking. Like I actually cooked my dinner what? last night. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. 
Um, so I think it's all what we make of it, right? So I'm I'm gonna enjoy it, even though I'm gonna I'm gonna be a little stir crazy, I think, but we'll get through it. <laughs> right on. Mark, what do you think? I, I think I saw a bead of sweat form in her forehead when she's like, I'm actually cooking. Like <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, it's funny, I, and I'm not a real biblical person, but it's funny. I found myself opening the bo- uh, to the book of James today, which is actually about all about trials, you know, and it's funny because I am I'm probably the worst Bible scholar ever in the history of ever. Um, but it was kind of like I was like, wow, this again, I don't believe in any coincidence when it comes to that. I was just like, huh, interesting. Right. So it's just an interesting trial period that we're all in right now. Mm-hmm. But, you know, for me, I, I've. um Again, because I'm just such a, you know, a disgusting optimist, you know, I, and, and I, my natural tendency is to make light of things. Um, but it is serious. It is serious for people out there. And, and it, but, um, but it doesn't mean that we can't always try to look at the positive side of things. Um, you know, I had a conversation of very, uh, you know, from a personal side and, and I, and I, even though this is business, some people could argue it's business, but I did have a conversation with my staff today individually. And I said, you know, to all of them, you know, we are going to need to make sacrifices. We are going to need to make, to, to do some things differently. I don't know what that means, but don't, you know, we are going to need to, you know, trim back on hours a little bit. No one's being laid off. I mean, as far as I can prevent, but you know, just know that I need you to come to me before something turns into a crisis. Yeah. And I think just having that conversation, you know, like a conversation with vendors, you know, we need to, Normally we, we we're on a seven day pay with all our vendors, mm-hmm. you know, <clears throat> and I've had the conversation with some of my, some of my vendors that were my smaller vendors. Um, we might need to push that out a few weeks, you know, just because the velocity of money has slowed down. Um, you know, and I want to treat my vendors well. And these are people that, I mean, they look at us like, like a paycheck, yep. you know, they, they don't, they don't have to wait 30 and 45 days like, like with other, with other vendors and, or with other uh, suppliers like uh, other property management companies and other and other people who are landlords, they, they're on a 30, 45, 60 day pay schedule. They look at us like a paycheck. So they're very, very loyal to us, but we've had to have that conversation to says, just say, look, it's not that we don't want you to work with. We just, we're, we're not getting the money in and, and, and there's no reason to hold on to it, but we just, we may have to kick it out a little bit. And they appreciate the conversations, but these are people that I want them to know that we care about them. We care about their families. And, um, so that's where we've had that conversation. And uh, and I think having the conversations is better to have than not have. And just so just people know, just so they know what's going on. Absolutely. Mark, thank you again for, for being on this special episode with us today. And, and since we're all kind of quarantined, this worked out great to have this communication tool to where we can still talk and, and do, do what we do every day and, and be able to provide some information from our different uh, aspects of real estate and how it affects us. So I thought it was a great conversation today. Hope everyone stays safe and healthy out there. And, you know, until next time, I'm Justin Bogart. I'm Elizabeth Mayor Sickles. And? And Mark Dolfini, Landlord Coach. All right, guys, there you have it. Thanks for tuning in. And don't forget to go to our video channels, Bright Path Notes YouTube and Elizabeth Mayor YouTube's channel. Two Wealth Show is produced by Justin Bogard and Super E, sponsored by Bright Path Notes and Elizabeth Mayora. Thanks for listening and watching for our show.